Which doctors make the most money? Let's go. I'll jump right in and just say it. The doctors who make the most money are the ones who work with their hands. They do surgeries or procedures. Check it out. This is the 2023 Medscape Physician Compensation Report. At the top, we've got plastic surgery with a salary of 619,000, followed by orthopedics, then cardiology, urology, and gastroenterology. What do all five of these specialties have in common? They all involve working with your hands. Plastics, orthopedics, and urology are all surgical specialties. They entail actually using a scalpel to cut and perform major surgeries in the OR. Cardiology and gastroenterology, on the other hand, are internal medicine subspecialties. I'm an internal medicine doc myself. Trust me, we don't use a scalpel to perform major wide open surgery in the OR. But what we do are procedures. Cardiology and gastroenterology are two procedure focused specialties. Cardiologists, although there are general cardiologists who don't perform a whole lot of procedures, many cardiologists are trained as interventionalists. They perform cardiac catheterizations where the coronary arteries are accessed and if any blockages are found, they can place stents to help open them up. Gastroenterologists also do procedures. These are doctors who focus on diagnosing and treating diseases in the gastrointestinal tract. What they do is endoscopy. So this is where they use scopes to visualize and sometimes intervene on the inside of the gastrointestinal tract. Now let's change gears. Let's look at the lowest paid specialties. We have preventative medicine, pediatrics, family medicine, infectious disease, and endocrinology. What do these specialties have in common? Well, you probably guessed it. They generally do not involve a whole lot of surgeries or procedures. Now, quick caveat here. There are some exceptions. Some family practice doctors do actually do surgery. They can do C-sections or other procedures, but these are the minority. For the most part, these specialties are more focused on working only with your brain or, or more with your brain and not so much with your hands. So why is it that doctors who work with their hands are paid more than doctors who don't? Well, there's a few reasons you might say that, you know, these are surgeons, right? They're very highly trained, perhaps more so than general practice doctors. And there might be a little bit of truth to this. Um, general surgeons do a residency program that's usually five years. Compare that to internal medicine or family practice, which is three years. However, that's not always the case. Uh, for example, infectious disease specialists, these are doctors who do three years of internal medicine and then an additional two years of fellowship to become specialists in infectious disease. So these doctors have every bit as much training or as long of a training uh, program as general surgeons, yet they get paid much less. So it's not all about just how highly trained you are. Uh, you could also say that maybe it's maybe they just work harder, right? Like surgeons are certainly notorious for having very long hours and having a very grueling schedule. And again, I think this is based in some truth. Medscape also surveyed the average work week of different doctors. And you will see at the top, there's a lot of those procedure oriented specialties like cardiology, general surgery are pretty near the top. And these specialties that are less focused on procedures, you find them closer um, to the bottom. They don't generally work as many hours in the week. But I think the biggest reason why the procedural specialties tend to command higher salaries than their non-procedural counterparts has to do with billing. In the United States, at least, we have a billing system that I think really rewards doing procedures like surgeries or some kind of interventions. Uh, perhaps more so than doctors who um, just work with their brains. Now, now, first of all, it's not like I'm saying surgeons or proceduralists don't work with their brains. They do, believe me, it's, it is very cerebral work. Um, perhaps I should say they work with their hands in addition to their brains. But anyway, uh, I do think that um, just how we, we handle billing in this country is perhaps the bigger reason why the procedural specialties get paid more. I wish I knew more about that. I'm not an expert in billing or how doctors get paid, which is one of the reasons why I work for a big HMO. I didn't want to have to deal with that myself. I just don't have an interest in it, so I never went into private practice. But um, that's what I suspect is uh, the biggest reason for this discrepancy in pay. Now, before we go on any further, I have a little uh, caveat here. Um, you know, it's, some would say that it's rather off-putting for a doctor to talk about getting paid money, who gets paid more, and, and that sort of thing. And um, I can see why. This is a profession that's very much focused on helping people where the bottom line is not 
the main reason why I think most people go into medicine. I don't think most people go into this uh, job for the money, but maybe because it's something that people are kind of afraid to talk about, that's uh, one reason why I wanted to make this video. And finally, I will say that there are doctors in non-procedural specialties uh, who do increase their income uh, through a variety of ways. Uh, one way is you could just simply work additional shifts, like you take my schedule as a hospitalist, I'll work seven days on, then I get seven days off. So somebody who wants to earn a little extra cash might do a couple extra shifts during that week off. Uh, you can also choose to work shifts that are overnights, on weekends, or during holidays. Usually these shifts can command a premium. And with all of this, I do know some doctors in these non-procedural, low-paying specialties who actually make more than surgeons uh, just by really capitalizing on these other opportunities. That's it, thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoy medical or healthcare related videos like this, feel free to hit the subscribe button there and uh, check out another video right here. And I'll see you guys next time.